Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is a Ryzen 5 3600X processor that I paid just £69 for. That's at least half and in some cases three times less than the usual price that these sell for on the used market as of January 2021. Prices are high and stock is low right now on pretty much everything, so why then was this so cheap? Well, as it turns out, it was listed as faulty with a boot cycle problem. Sometimes the system threw up a no bootable device found message, according to the seller. Given that all the pins were intact and the seller had a perfect feedback score, I bought it anyway because to me, this sounded more like a hard drive related issue than a CPU related one, especially given the no bootable device message that was apparently stopping the seller's test system from working working as it should. So let's see what's up. Now as described the system did indeed boot and after getting into the BIOS on my third attempt I made my usual memory adjustments and hit F10 only to be greeted with a couple of system crashes. I say a couple but the boot loop would have likely gone on for well forever had I not switched off the power supply. After googling the 3600X's symptoms and posting its ailments on Twitter, you guys and the rest of the internet told me that this thing was probably degraded due to a life of punishing overclocks. It's probably been run with a much higher voltage than recommended for a while. I don't know if the seller knew this, but I don't think they did, given that they were selling a few other processors too. They probably just bought a faulty hardware bundle and were selling them on after an initial boot test. Which is perfectly fine, I mean this is pretty much exactly as described. So what now? Well, after a little more research, I decided to follow some advice that said I should underclock or downclock the CPU in the BIOS and see if it booted. I decided to go from the stock 3.8 GHz or 3800 MHz to just 3 GHz or 3000 MHz and see if this would resolve our issue. And the system actually got to the Windows login page. With this good news, I headed back into the BIOS where I eventually established that the highest we could set this chip to was 3.4 GHz, 400 MHz less than its intended stock speed. I made a quick chart here that details my findings. As you can see, stock speeds were out of the question and a 200 MHz reduction was also problematic, but 3.4 GHz or anything below that meant a trouble-free experience. I've been using this CPU for a few hours now and it's running perfectly fine, with sensible temperatures too. But is this actually usable in the real world? Could we continue to use this Ryzen 3600X at these speeds and still have, say, a decent gaming experience? Or could I still edit and render my YouTube videos without any problems? First things first then, and I jumped into Cinebench R20 to see just how this new and lower clock speed affected things. What was interesting is that the 3600X still scored over 3000 points and was just 4 points shy of my daily driver, the i5-10400F. Now bear in mind though that we were able to make use of the 3200MHz memory to its full extent here, whereas the i5 is only compatible with 2666MHz speeds, at least with my budget motherboard. Where we've lost performance due to the dropping clock speed, we've made it up with the faster memory clocks. From what I've read, we'd be getting closer to 3700 points at stock speeds with the 3600X here, and somewhere in the 400 point range for stock single core performance. For my next test I rendered a 1080p 60fps gameplay clip in Premiere Pro and although I was expecting this to cause a sudden system crash or major freeze, everything went smoothly and what's more we saw a very respectable render time of 48.73 seconds. I couldn't resist once again comparing this to my i5 which was just under 4 seconds slower. Productivity tends to be the Ryzen's forte, and even in its somewhat bruised and battered state, it's still putting up a very strong fight. When it comes to gaming, it's usually the case that the 3600 and 10400F trade blows, with one chip outperforming the other in some titles and vice versa. They're both good choices, 
even in 2021, though personally living in the UK, I'd go for the i5 as it can be found for less money at the moment. In terms of performance then, and under usual circumstances, the 3600X should still be a very good gamer, ever so slightly more than the 3600. But how has what could be months of abuse affect our cheap eBay find? Well, honestly, I can't say that I could tell. The 3600X still powers through even the newest titles and makes a great pairing for my RTX 3070. The reduced clock speed also meant that our temperature stayed very cool even with a stock cooler. All of the games I tested today did fairly well, but there were some noticeable stutters in a couple of titles. I'm not sure if this is due to the reduction in clock speed or if they just don't like AMD chips, but where it was most noticeable was with Cyberpunk 2077 and Kingdom Come Deliverance. Now having said that though, Cyberpunk was tested in a very busy downtown area, and I discovered later on that my i5 also experienced dips, but a little more on that comparison later. For the time being though, let's focus solely on the 3600X's gaming performance. What I will say now, as well, before I forget to mention it, is that I'm glad we were still able to keep all of the CPU's cores and threads enabled. I'm not sure how having to disable a couple of cores would have affected things, but I think 6 cores and 12 threads at a lower clock speed will do better than a 4 core 8 threaded chip with a higher clock speed. Maybe that's a test for another day. I actually went back to see if disabling a core or a couple of cores meant that we could run this thing at full speed, but unfortunately we still got stuck in an infinite boot loop. So six cores at 3.4 gigahertz with SMT enabled seems to be the way to go for the best performance. Now I am very tempted to keep this chip in my system. It shouldn't be too difficult to sell on to someone who knows what they're doing and doesn't mind running this CPU at a lower than intended speed, but I can't help but be curious as to how long it will last. Has the reduction in speed meant that it should continue running for years to come, or does this degradation mark the start of an untimely death that's likely to occur when I'm doing something important on my computer? To finalise then, I made a few more comparisons between the 3600X and my i5-10400F in a few of the most demanding games I tested today, which were Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Watch Dogs Legion, and Cyberpunk 2077. The results were very close, and this pattern, just like with stock speeds, can be seen in a lot of games, whereby one of these two will pull ahead ever so slightly. Some games though, will show a much bigger difference between the two chips. The Watch Dogs Legion result seems to be representative of what you can expect in most CPU intensive games though. With this reduction in speed, the 3600X will slip behind, but even so it's a negligible difference. These tests were conducted by following the same route through a particularly intensive area in each title, hence the figures may be a bit lower than you might expect. With all that said then, this video was never really about comparisons, I just had nothing else to compare the 3600X to, and I couldn't exactly run it in full speed mode for a comparison either. Knowing that my i5 usually puts up a pretty close fight, I figured that it was the best indicator as to whether our Ryzen was severely affected by its past life, but I'm glad to see that that isn't the case. And with this lower clock speed, it should still run just fine. But what do you think? Should I keep this thing just for the sake of giving it a good relaxed and easy life? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. As always, thank you very much for watching. Now I don't exactly recommend going out and trying to find a faulty CPU in the hopes that it works. It's just that by going down this route, we did manage to save a lot of money over buying one of these fully working ones, new, and I'm not sure how much the performance has actually been sacrificed. So yeah, from what I can see, it's still performing pretty well, but how long it holds up for now, well remains to be seen. But if you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.